What's up everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Hackitech Playground. Today I want to discuss with you and show you how the cloud container attack tool works and what is the common scenario of testing and penetration testing of cloud container services. Let's go for that. Let's talk about what is cloud container attack tool in a nutshell. CCAT from Reno Security Labs, which is a boutique for penetration testing and security assessment in Seattle, it's a pretty interesting tool for security testing of the container environments in Google Cloud Platform in AWS. There is some quick reference that you can use for the Paku and CloudGo that are really good tools also, and some requirements that I really recommend to you check before you will install the tool. Installation is pretty simple. You just go to the repository and install that with setup.py, and then you can use ccat.py just with the Python tree. The requirements are very important. You need to have 3.5 Python or higher. You need to have installed Docker on your local host and it must be engine, Docker engine in a version 19.03.1 and the name profile is required for the AWS functionality. That means that you need to have configured your AWS credentials in the local file and this AWS credentials, they need to be in the name profile that will be used by this tool and the service account and access token required for the GCP functionality. These are the requirements before you will run this great and amazing tool. And I think that we can start to get more practical. So the workflow for cloud container attack tool is pretty simple. When we will go with that, we can say that the first stage of our work are getting the compromised credentials, AWS access key and secret key, and configuring them in our credential file. Critical for the Docker login and for using this tool, because this tool utilizes the credentials that you already stored in your uh, local host. So it uses your local setup. So then you list your ECR repositories. When you get these repositories, you get the complete database of available pool for you. Then you can pull the selected image from the ECR. When you get this image, then you can modify it. So you select specific image, you can spe specify multiple tags or one tag. Then you create this backdoor image. You can create that by adding layer by layer and then pushing this improved image back into ECR where you take it from. Pretty simple. So again, get the credentials, list the ECR repositories, pull selected image, create the backdoor image and push this improved image back to your repository. Okay, now we are in AWS Management Console, which is our first step. And then we need to go to Elastic Container Registry, which is a container service from AWS. I have here uh, DevSecOps and Hackitect repositories. Two different repositories with two different setups. There is a tag immutability, it's disabled, and scan frequency for the DevSecOps is scan on push. So every time when I will push a container, there is a vulnerability scan, and then the manual scanning for the Hackitect. And both of them are encrypted with the basic uh, encryption with AS 256. So I will go to DevSecOps and I will show there is a one tagged Hackitect. And this is pushed at 11 December. There are some vulnerabilities and 29 others. And we will work with this one. What I will do, I will authenticate again myself against the repository to be able to push the commands there or to get the image, to modify it and then push it back. So I will click on view push, view push commands and I will copy the first one. Then you need to go to your CLI, and I already prepared this one, and hit enter. You, you can do that, or usually when you will be attacker or pen tester, you will do it during your testing because you will get from the from the AWS scan, you will get your credentials, or from the credentials that you have, you will get this uh, repository where I. But I did it first because I just want to go like smoothly through the tool. I just want to show you the main features of the tool itself. So you need to have AWS credentials in your credential file for AWS. And also you need to have, you need to be authenticated against the registry itself, but uh, you know, AWS credentials will help you with that. 
And then it is very simple. I will write Python tree ccat.py and what it will do, it will start the tool itself. It's an interactive command line tool where you can swap the AWS profile. You can right here, I will use default one, which is my default pro with the leaked credentials, potentially leaked credentials. Uh, make a typo here. So I can, you, you can anytime swap your AWS profile to any profile you want. So default. And when I'm here with the default profile, you see configuring AWS, successfully configured my AWS credentials, which is AWS uh, secret key and access key ID. And what I can do is click on, or not click, there is a, like one trick. The, the CLI tool is controlled with the spacebar and enter. When you want to select specific choice, you need to use spacebar and with the enter, you are selecting the choices too. So spacebar and enter. So I have enter here and then you need to select the region which we want to enumerate. We are in EU West one, which is uh, Ireland and I will hit enter and it will give me total two ECR repositories are enumerated. This is pretty cool and very great. ECR resources are saved under data ECR enum repos data JSON. So anytime later you want to check and you want to investigate what you find uh, in your like testing session, you will be able to look at this JSON and get it. When you, want, when you want to get more details, hit enter here and you will see that we enumerated two different repositories. One is Hackitech, second is DevSecOps and they identifiers. Pretty simple, pretty good. You see also the amount of tags there, also the region. So we, we see here that I have in one region, that means Ireland, EU West one, two different repositories or registries here. And basically I can, you know, play with them. So what I will do here is a pull repos from the ECR. So I will pull and pull single repo because I'm interested only in one of these. And what I will do, I will pull the Hackitect one, modify the image and then push it back. So what, what I will do, I will just copy paste the image, sorry, the, the registry identifier here. Ah, oh, it was the region name, so I made a mistake. So I will go through that and I will do it again. Anytime when you do the mistake, just go through that again, again, again. And then it will, you can go back to the menu. So I will again, click on pull repos, single repo, EU fast. This is what something what I forget. And EU West one, I hit enter the URI and the ECR repository tag separated by comma. I'm just interested in one in Hackitect. And then what it will do, it will, it will pull one ECR repositories and all the ECR resources are saved and used for the Docker images. So you can use Docker image command and you will get it because we just like pulled the image in our local host and we can modify it. So what is the next step? And you can do the same thing for the GC, GCR. This is very important to say. So Docker backdoor, hit enter. Again, the name of the repository, the tag, the original tag is Hacky tag. And now I will run the second. This is the new tag. It's a backdoor, backdoor, and I'll hit enter. And now, now we can add layer by layer different instructions. So I will say run echo and hello. Backdoor. And that's the first layer that I'm adding to the image. And then it will ask you for another, another layer. So I will say, okay, run Carl HTTPS. So you can run any you know, control and command center. You can copy paste your scripts for the backdoor. When you will be remote attacker, you will try to put there some RC framework or some backdoor. So, but this is only for our testing purposes. So I will use my web page, www.sotlmarek.com. And I will just hit enter. So this will add two different layers. You can look at the layers because you can see the current Docker file. You see also that it takes the base image from the one that we now, like pull it from that and from, from the ECR. And what I will do now, I will just hit enter 
with the empty instruction and hitting enter, it will offer you the review. So with the review, you can see whole Docker file from which repository it takes the base, from which image, and then running two different layers. You can say, no, I want to continue or yes. I will say, yes, I want to continue. And what it will do, it will create one image for us. So it will tell you one image is built. When you build the image, what you can do, you can push the repos to back to ECR. So we, we pull it down, we, we, we pulled the image to our local host, modify it interactively with this tool. You don't need to be expert in Docker. And then we can push it back. So that's that's pretty cool. So let's push. And EU West. Well, this is the like bothering part, but and again the the URI that we should use and the the new tag that we say that we will use back door. So hit enter. And what it will do, it will check the layers, create the new layers, and you see here. ECR repository is pushed, ECR resources are saved in the memory database. And that means that we were successful by creating new malicious Docker file, pushing that or the Docker image and pushing that to ECR. This is pretty cool. And imagine that there will be like, the, I will use the same tag. The company will not even notice that you change something if there is some like, uh, there's missing peer review or anything like that. So what, or the problem is that I have permissions for that. I have IAM permissions to do that. My leaked credentials allow me to do that. So, so what we can do, we can go back to AWS and verify how it looks like. So I will refresh, refresh the page. And we can see here the new image tag with the back door. Pretty interesting. So <laughs> that, that is like not the same amount of vulnerabilities, which uh, I can be proud of that, but uh, we can click on that and you see here that is created here now with the 4 January 22. So that's a new image, new image details that I've just pushed into the ECR. And this is pretty cool. And I really love this tool because it's a really good assessment tool for the cloud container attacks. Let's talk about the protection itself. It's pretty simple and it takes some time to build something what is resistant against some attacks. So enforce something called GitOps. GitOps is basically saying that your Git repository or commits and your code is a single source of the truth. And that's what is called like GitOps because you, everything what is committed is also deployed on the production staging or any environment that you selected. And there is a pipeline or any automation built around that. So peer review for container definition definitions are super important too. So don't forget to have some manual input from the persons who understand how the Docker should build. I'm doing mistakes. Everyone is doing mistakes, and it is really good to have some external input. I always, I was really happy when, you know, I had a colleague called Brian and he was helping me to, to deploy like massive container stuff. And I always forget something because I was in the hurry and uh, I was like under the pressure and I need to basically put everything in place and then I forget something or uh, you know skip something and I forget important things or I uh, didn't keep my own best practice. So it is really good to have something or somebody who will help you to improve and be like safeguard for you. Don't forget to restrict IAM permissions. Restrictions for the IAM permissions are super important. So you can restrict the permissions like ECR put image or ECR initiate a layer upload for your own sake, because you can save lots of time. If you will restrict your users to put images or initiate layer, layer uploads in your ECR, it will basically save your life you shouldn't allow your users to modify the Docker containers. You can allow them to download some of them, but you shouldn't allow, you shouldn't be in the situation that anyone who gets some AWS credentials can push it there. That's lots of companies that I was like doing any penetration testing for them. They, they, they are having these problems. They are in this situation. So I really recommend to enforce GitOps and restrict the IAM permissions, then push the images through the code build. Code build is a pipeline. It's a piece of the pipeline. It's a building service or build job service in AWS that can help you to run several vulnerability scans and linting and all the stuff that you need to like test in your Docker container. 
before you will deploy it and then, then deploy it. And it, it's not necessary to be done by humans. And this is really, this is really cool that, that you can have also manual approval in, in a pipeline, in AWS pipeline. So that's something that can help you a lot. And don't forget to create dedicated IAM roles for ECR management. So your common employees or not all the developers needs to have permission for ECR management. That's, that's pretty simple. Another great example of whole solution is when you have Docker file and you are pushing these Docker files in the kit. So you define the Docker containers with the Docker files. They are reviewed, they are peer reviewed, and there is some linting in your CI CD that will help you to, you know, enforce the best practices for the Docker containers. Then you can use not only code commit, you can use GitHub or anything that you use or Bitbucket for your code management. So AWS code commit is a managed service for ROM AWS that will help you. And it's, it's Git compliant. So no big deal for you. You just use it. Then this code commit can invoke after you will push any code there. It can invoke AWS code build, which is a building service that can run several tests for you too. It can build the Docker container. It can test the vulnerabilities. It can, you can do it like EC, in ECR too, but it can test like more things you can do whenever you like any unit testing with your code, anything you like. Then there can be like manual approval for this AWS code build. And then you can publish that to Elastic Container Registry. So it can, as a part of this job can be pushing the information or pushing the Docker image in the Elastic Container Registry. It will create a immutable container. So this container can be used in the task definition for the Elastic Container Service itself. And what is really good that EC Elastic Container Registry now have like on push scanning information or on push scanning capability with AWS Inspector to give you information about the known vulnerabilities. So you can do your own test, but ECR will take, or AWS ECR will take care with the conjunction of AWS Inspector of your vulnerabilities that you can look at them in AWS console. And uh, that's the simple solution or the GitOps solution that you can have around this uh, really nice uh, protection, I will say, or the architecture for protection of your services or Docker or container services in AWS. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. This is not the only episode that I have ever made. So you can select one of these that you see on the screen and select to watch them, have some good time and some good learning. So see you next time and thank you for watching.